What's up guys, on today's episode we go over a little bit of MMA news, uh, maybe a couple other things, talk about some actions that happened during the week, stuff that popped up on Twitter. Before we get started, we like to say here at uh, Hook J Podcast that we support local fighters, and one of the easiest ways to see local fighters is that extreme knockout. If you guys never seen one of these fights, it's pretty cool. They, they're over at Gas Monkey Live, is where they tend to do a lot of their shows. You can find them at ExtremeKnockout.com, and if you can't make it to one of their shows, you can go to X- XKO.TV. You can watch all the highlights and even some of the co- upcoming events. Way to cut a promo. Welcome to the Hook J Podcast. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? It's all said and done. I know one thing that I can do. I can fight. I can give it and I can take it. You should have left me over on that other game that I'm from, that more ruthless game where we bounce heads off the canvas and drill them into the floor. You should have left me where I was. The show starts now. Let's get into it. So first bit of news. Do we have any? First of all, no, because there's not really much happening this week. Um, everybody's uh, waiting to the weekend, August 17. You got a Bellator event. I think that's 206 for them. And then August, the week after that. Yeah, August 17th, you do got a Bellator event. I think you got a CES event. Yeah, um, CES on the 16th. You also have the uh, on-sell tickets release for Extreme Knockout 43. Check them out if you get a chance. Especially you guys are in the local area. Uh, Dallas, by the way. Yep. Yeah, August 17th is when they go on sale. The fight's not till September 29th, but that gives you even more time to stare at the ticket and go, man, I wish I was there. So, yeah, not a lot of whole, whole bunch of stuff happening on the UFC front because their event's not until the 25th. And then the 8th of the September would be their next event, too. That would be their pay-per-view card. But Bellator's got some fights coming up this weekend. That's about all the action you really got. So, because of that, this episode's mostly going to be about a couple of things we see in the news. It'll probably be a little shorter than normal. I mean, it, it's, at this point, unless you're really into Ryzen, there wasn't really much action or LFA. They had a fight this weekend. At Ryzen, I think, had, in my opinion, two really good highlights. One was an arm triangle. The other one was a Von Flu choke that happened on, uh, how do you say your name? Angelia Magno. Is the one that uh, Simon Cyborg bitch slapped. Oh, a which lot. one? Uh, yeah, who she, little... in real life. In real life, when oh, um, she was, she's the UFC know. like bantamweight villain or ex bantamweight villain. She uh, couldn't tell you, brother. Your Highness, I think, is her her thing. Everyone called her. Your Highness is yeah. actually her ring name. Yeah, I, I I don't think it's her ring name. I think that was her okay. thing on Twitter. Like she kept saying people to bow down. I know it's Angela. Yoana? I don't want to say her last name. <laughs> is that Joanna? No, that's the boogie woman. Because <laughs> uh, you know she keeps telling everybody to bow down, uh, especially Rose. Yeah, she. Ah, she refuses to accept that loss. <laughs> Yeah, she had a fight in Ryzen, and going into it, she did her normal like thing she did where she talked shit and all that. She got her ass handed to her. She got she got wrestled the entire entire fight, thrown on the ground, and Von Flu choked until she tapped. Von Flu choke's interesting to watch, man. It's like an arm triangle, but it hurts more. Angela Magana. Magana. There you go. I could not remember how to say her last name. <laughs> Loses by Von Flu choke. Hatsu Hioki. I think that's how you say it. I don't know the pronunciation on that, but yeah, I wouldn't try that one to even tell you how to say that name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah she lost um and then there was the uh, arm triangle choke that was pretty cool there was a lot of finishes in ryzen but unless you're really into ryzen there's nothing really else we can talk about let's go over a couple things in the news ish because ish. there's not really a whole lot happening just about everything i can find guys it's just mostly about f you and see me in the ring and you're a bitch and everybody it's, it's all a, it's all promote work. everybody just throwing uh slaying at each so, other so right let's now. get into the mud slinging all right yeah the mud slinging last was it last week? Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And we know Dillashaw successfully defended his title, and I became champ. Uh, I want to throw it out in there. That's old news. <laughs> what is an old fake news? news? What is an old news is that him and Cejudo got into it on the extra set. They didn't throw punches or anything. They were, it was more of a verbal com- confrontation between the two of them. But they were talking shit. And I think they're trying to set that fight up for an upcoming event. It would be kind of cool. They fought on the same night. You know, Cejudo and Dillashaw didn't take too much damage to the fight. So I could see them possibly do it in the future if Dillashaw can get down to weight. I think that would be an interesting fight to see. Uh, you know, that's a big storm that Cejudo would have to go through. Uh, I'm interested in it. I'd watch it just because 
because of the simple fact that I want to see Henry Cejudo lose his freaking belt because he shouldn't have got it in the first place. That is still Mighty Mouse's belt. Oh, no, it's not. It's his belt. No, no, that's that's the Mighty Mouse belt. No, it's They his, should just put a big it, logo. It's his belt is what it is. He's, he's, he, he's the proper champ. Anybody who wins by decision, though, a split decision is that... They should not give the belt away. They should just take it from both of them and let them do another fight later on. No, he won. This, no. He won. Yeah, no, I get you it. You got to give him props. I he won. It. I'm not giving him any props. He, he beat he didn't Mighty do shit. Mouse. He didn't do shit. According to the judges. So yeah, he but, technically but won. But who are the judges? <laughs> who are the judges? People that don't know what the hell they're watching. Because they gave it to him off of one takedown that he didn't even do anything with. He barely did anything with it. And all the other takedowns, he could merely make a pass before he got up. Did you see... Uh, no, Brennan... one of them, he literally just laid there Did... on top of him. Well, Mighty Mouse was just like, all right, so what are we doing? The takedowns may have not fit your criteria, but they are the judge's criteria of a takedown. Yeah, but if I stand on your foot and push you backwards, and that's a knockdown? No, okay. It's not a knockdown, is boxing, it? Boxing, yeah. Oh, yeah, well... No, they'll, this they'll, is why they'll boxing counts is, as boxing. Sorry. It'll count as an MMA, too, if, you touch, if your ass touches the ground. That counts as a takedown. Is is what it is. I really don't think it should count. The judges, the, we've been over the judges before. They're not the greatest, but it still counts. Zahudo's still the champ. And honestly, I think Dillashaw is probably going to blow through Zahudo so fast, like a twister through a trailer park. At if, the end of the day, so. I think so too. If if they go up to Dillashaw's weight class, yeah, because that's a lot. That's a little bit of weight for Henry to put on. That is ten pounds. It's probably a little bit easier for him to work with wrestling wise. That's. Dillashaw's comfort zone. He does, he's not having to really cut a whole lot of weight to get there. He's familiar with that. His body knows what's going on. So Dillashaw already said he's fully prepared to cut down. He's did it before to get down to that weight just to see if he could do it. So I think we might be going down to Cejudo's weight. It's a better chance for Cejudo there than he has at 135. So I don't like it, but it is what it is, right? I don't get to make the dang call. I guess Dillashaw was on the warpath. Besides the uh, Cejudo uh, thing that happened. <laughs> Uh, he's Davis was talking shit. Gervonta uh, or Gervonta? I think I it's Gervonta. I'm just gonna call him Ger. Gervonta. Ger- Gervonta Davis. I just call him Davis. He's a uh, professional boxer. I'm not too into boxing, so I can't tell you. I imagine he has to have some balls on him or some championship belts around him to call out Dillashaw like it is. That's got to be the dumbest fucking thing he's ever did. Have you seen the entire Twitter exchange, though? I've seen most of I it. Think, I think it was Gervonta starting it, because like, his tweet is, I want to fight the dude that fought Cody yesterday. And then somebody asked him, uh, MMA or boxing? And he said MMA. So Dillashaw responded with, bring it. I heard they were handing out belts after Loma left your division anyway. Like, it's the dumbest thing for a box, a professional boxer that to go, I'm going to do go in, in MMA. Just like it is for an MMA to go, I'm going to go into boxing. You're going to get your ass handed to you. you yeah, I mean, well, you're, you're both specialists in your own division. The only person to really do it successfully was Butterbean out of all people. Uh... What's his name? Uh, James that was, Tony. That was back in the day, though. <laughs> James Tony came in and he got his ass handed to him by Randy Couture. Randy did everything and we knew he was going to do. Randy too. He grabbed him, he shoved him to the cage, and he worked and just wrestled the hell out of him. That's what we thought was going to happen. That's what was going to happen. Uh, Shannon Briggs. He sort of did the same thing. He did. A, I think he did a, pro, or a, a K1 match. I think it was more of a kickboxing thing. And I know he he might have won one or two of them, but he really wasn't successful. Butterbean. He you know he was the spectacle fight that I think Pride Pride got him and put him on, and he had a couple knockouts. And he actually has like three submissions. He put a couple people in a, a key lock or a Kimura, if you want to call it that. Oh wow. Uh, but yeah, he's got. He's the only one that I know of boxing wise to be successful in MMA, and it's so stupid for a professional boxer to go, "Oh, I want to, I want an MMA match," because you think you're gonna go in there, you gonna make this money from the UFC. Well, not just that. Like you're used to standing up, and yes, every fight, you know, they start standing. Do you really think TJ's not gonna throw a kick and just throw your power out? You start taking out their legs, they can't twist. I want hundred percent guarantee if they got in the ring, TJ got in the ring with a boxer, and they're in that octagon. He's going to throw a left, right, hide the high kick behind the right right hand, and come right up the side with a roundhouse. All he's got to do is... shin the fuck out of him. So all, all I think he really has to do is fake any type of jab or hook or anything. Let this guy think he's he's in his zone. All he's got to do is fake it one time and then hide the kick. Throw the kick. There you go. Yeah, like we, Act like, like you're going to jab. Let this guy do his usual defensive stuff that his body's naturally been designed to do now. And just throw a kick. We, Catch him in the jaw. 
<laughs> then you realize the power difference in a, a shin and a fist when you've got that much extra torque coming at you. You're like, okay, this is different. And then all you gotta do is land a few freaking leg shots and your game is thrown. Yeah, like it's, And let alone he takes him to the ground. It's such so. a bad idea for Davis to be like, oh, I'm gonna do this because we know as soon as you get in the thing, as soon as you get in the octagon, that door closes, it's no longer bullshit talk. You know, it's an actual fight. You're there either to win or to lose. And it can go either really good or really bad. And I guarantee you, if he hops, it doesn't matter if they're like, we're going to do this, and he gets six months of training, he's not going to learn grappling in six months. He's not going to learn kickboxing in six months. He's not going to learn any of that shit. He's, he's not, not going to learn how to check. any of the skills that he needs yeah. to survive. And it's going to be just horrible on him, which is a good thing, because I think he started to backpedal as of recently, because I checked Twitter a while ago. And TJ was like, oh, it's a good thing he started backpedaling. So maybe he's trying to, like, take the foot out of his mouth. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see how that one goes. Well, That's a bad idea well, for David. Dillashaw basically said, you know, I, I'd love to let him taste my shin. And, look, you got a padded record, so I'll beat you. And freaking Gravanta comes back. Let's make it happen, pussy. And then they get into another exchange. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, I love it how you want to stay relevant, running your mouth. Uh, instead of what you've accomplished in boxing, your record is as padded as a push-up brawl. And you're only irrelevant because you're Daddy Mayweather. Never heard of a champ not ready to fight another champ. It's just a bad idea, man. You know, stay over boxing. Stay over getting tin cans thrown at you so you can pad your record. Because every boxer does it. You know, Mayweather did it. Ali did it. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. did it all the way up. And they have a couple big fights and are the greatest of all time one thing uh no matter what kind of verbal exchange happens when people just start saying uh i'll beat your ass i'll beat you i'll whoop your ass I'm like all right dude you already know you lost the verbal the verbal argument well it's the... so somebody did you seen the the photoshop picture of tj yeah. kicking him and then uh, all he did was put nap time and then gravanta comes back with i'll whip your ass i was like all right dude i know you lost well, and like tj is just like hey man Ask your daddy Mayweather for permission to come over. That that really got me going. I was laughing on that the, one. The, the funniest part about it is when when you see a Twitter exchange between two fighters and one go, it gets down to the point where like, oh yeah, sign the contract, I'll beat your ass, blah, blah, blah. It's the equivalent of the swinging bro, you know, <laughs> of the two frat bros at the party who's like, swing first. No, you that's swing the, first. That's the, like the Twitter equivalent of it. And it shows you that, see, if that fight takes place, we know who's going to win. Like... <laughs> It's going to be a walk in the park and an easy 20 Gs for Dillashaw. Maybe more than that. I don't know how much he gets paid to fight. I would hope at least more than 20 Gs. As long as he stays out <laughs> of the pocket so that this dude can't land any type oh, of... Oh, I get it. It's, not, it, it's no problem. If it was boxing, Davis would have a chance because uh, Dillashaw is really good at boxing, but I've seen the videos of him and uh, Lomachenko right. fighting. And, you know, given Lomachenko is the greatest boxer on earth right now, you know, he got his ass handed to him. You know, if it, he's saying it's you, they're going to do it to MMA, Davis ain't got a chance. I, I'm getting really tired of people saying I can go box. Why, why don't you step in the octagon and see what you can actually do in a real fight? We, The funny part is we know that there's only been a few people, you know, Butterbean's the only one come to think, but even then the people he fought didn't have a ground game at all. Yeah. It was just like a spectacle they put on. We know that no professional boxer, like James Tony, I think was probably the most prestigious one that came over to do it no professional boxer has held their own in the octagon at all for some reason mma when a, like connor when he went over to fight floyd that was an amateur but connor's amateur boxer went to a professional show held the greatest boxer of all time that many people say to an eight round fight a person who never fought an amateur never fought a professional boxing match essentially he's an amateur held the greatest of all time to an eight round boxing match that should not have happened you can say floyd tried to carry him the whole fight that's not true the whole object of a boxing match is to hit and not get hit and Floyd was hit the most in his entire career it's amazing that I don't really want to break that down because there's a lot of variables because like if you believe what he said is like no he wanted to do something different okay all right maybe you did want to do something different because you put on that shit show of a Pacquiao fight where you know you just ran around like a Benny Hinn or Benny Hill movie yeah it's like come on man now I get it if that was your goal was to get people to pay attention to your fight why not go out there and in the third or fourth just light him up if you're that damn good why didn't you just light him up and prove you're the best in the first or second yeah. why not go up there and showboat i didn't i don't understand it like if you want to prove you're the best why are you gonna let this other dude talk shit on a world tour and then not do everything you can to beat him in the first well you, that's i get what you did it was strategy you wanted to let him wear himself out because he 
Well, see, McGregor I don't, looked I don't horrible believe, in the bath part. I don't believe that was Floyd's strategy. I think Floyd, you know, you can say what you want, all right? No way a professional boxer of any caliber would have let a guy talk that much shit and have it go on for eight rounds if he could finish it within the first three. Because let's face it, if a guy walks out of there, talks shit, finishes it, finishes the guy within the first three rounds, then you have the ability to talk so much shit afterwards to have this credibility over that sport. Because at the point, it's not just... Oh, it's a spectacle. It's a sport versus sport is what they were trying to build it up as. Right. So why not try to finish the first? I fully believe that Connor came in there with such a good game plan that it threw him off his own. And For a while, yeah. He eventually agree. adapted and came through it because we all know Connor got tired. Connor was really fucking tired in the eighth round, right? Which is yeah. the one to finish. And Floyd just let him have it. But the first couple rounds, Connor was doing fairly decent. And for a guy who's actually an amateur boxer, essentially, to hold what people say the greatest of all time to that, because I don't know about the judges. 24 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah. The judging was weird. If it went to a decision, that whole fight would have been an uproar because a lot of people would have saw it the first couple rounds. I had it for Connor. You know, Connor won. I would say the first four rounds, yeah. yeah three, Connor... did three... Definitely. Four, I think they started to, uh, it swayed more towards Mayweather when you watch it. And then he rallied, I think it was in the seventh. He rallied a little bit, but then he just got eaten up by fatigue in the eighth, man. If that fight would have went to decision, and according to what they had on there, I think he only, according to the judges, won like one or two rounds. He didn't win any to one of them. One of the judges is like, nope, he didn't win a single round. Yeah, and to a lot of the fans, even couple of the analysts were like he won a couple rounds you can't deny the fact that he won a couple rounds mayweather lost like by the round until he finished him if he didn't finish him eventually he would have won just because connor was tired as fuck who knows whenever that second win would have hit him though yeah because if he could have sat down at the end of that i don't agree with the stoppage where it was just based off like what i've seen in boxing Okay, I'm not a big boxing guy. I don't watch a yeah. whole bunch of it. I haven't watched a whole bunch of it since Roy Jones fought. I think the fact that Connor took a lot of hits just repeatedly back and forth and they jumped in, they stopped the fight. They should have let it go because I've seen boxers hit the ground and they get their 10 seconds to get back up. It's like, why wouldn't you unless it was, at least let this guy take the shots to be knocked down first? There was a bunch of bullshit about that fight. Don't make any excuses. You'll probably watch the highlights now. It's been a while since that fight's happened. There was a bunch of bullshit about that fight. Oh, yeah, the fact that Mayweather kept turning his back to him, too. It was like, That's one really? thing you should... That really? ref the, the should have taken time. points off for, because in boxing, you're not allowed to turn your back like he did. I, again, I don't know enough about it to make an educated there was, claim on there it. There was... Uh, People talk, oh, Connor should have had points taken away because he was hitting him with the, the hammer fist, which you're allowed to do. You're allowed to hit with the, the palm of the glove. It's called an anchor punch. Joe Frazier did it. Uh, Joe Lewis did it. Muhammad Ali did it. It's there. You're allowed to use it. People were talking bullshit about it. It's a, that whole fight it was just a bunch of shit. I know it's not really relevant anymore, but yeah, you gotta, we go. you know, we got we to gotta get to going on to more shit. Back to the bantamweight division, though. I want to see TJ do do the fight with either Marlon Moraes or Henry Cejudo. Depending on which way we're going to go. If we're going to stay in division, I want the Marlon Moraes fight. I don't want the Dominic Cruz fight yet because I kind of, I don't like TJ a lot, but I'm coming around to his side because I agree with Dom made him fight somebody else before he would even give him a chance, but he lost the belt before. Yeah. Right? So yeah, make Dom, if Dom's out there talking shit right now anyways about, I'm not promoting these guys because they never promoted me and yada yada, they never had anything nice to say about me. Like, you know, whatever, you're an analyst, spend it however you want to get back in the game. This is your career, not mine. I don't think he should give the shot to Dominic Cruz. Put him through the same kind of crap he was putting you through. I mean, eye for an eye, right? But if he stays in the division, I want to see him fight Marlon Moraes, Moraes, however you want to say it, or uh, Rafael Asuncao. Javier? Yeah. Javier Asuncao. Well, I'm going to read like an American. Yeah. Yeah. Javier Asuncao, because... The dude's 11 and 1, and he's already beat TJ. Yeah, I think that would be a good fight. I think if Cruz decides to come back, uh, I think he needs a warm up fight. I think if anybody has that much time off, they need a warm up fight. Two years almost. You know, I, you know, I honestly I don't agree with Connor coming back and fighting for the championship, but he's Connor. He can do what the hell he wants. He can tell the UFC he's to fuck He's still in off. the ranking. That's he's, the thing, though. Which he's is still crazy. in the top ten. He moved I don't understand up in the pound for pound ranking, which there. is crazy. Um, but if anybody takes that much time off, I completely agree they should have a warm-up fight before they go do anything like that. You know, if they're a big name, like Diaz, he's not fighting for a belt, but he's still a main event because he's a big name. He's got that fight with uh, Poirier coming up, which I agree with. Like, that's that's going to be a good fight. That, that's one I'm really hoping goes through and Diaz doesn't be Diaz, I should say. 
<laughs> well, no, I, I hope he, I hope he gets to beat Diaz, but I don't. I, I just hope he shows up to the fight. I hope, I hope he goes. Did you hear what um, Brendan Child was saying about it? Like he basically stole the press conference. He did attention from Connor. He did, which is hilarious. Nobody was talking about Connor after that presser. They were talking about Diaz walking out of it. Yeah, they were talking about Diaz, what he said on the way to the, the his car. Which is great because it shows that there's more to the UFC than just Connor. Diaz is a big draw, anyways, right now, especially after his fights with Connor. Yeah, his record isn't astronomically impressive. Like he's not a you know, fifteen and one guy. His, his record's not impressive, but the people he fought and the people he won oh no yeah the were, caliber like well, that's what yeah. makes his record even as not eleven and one or fifteen and one or zero and whatever what makes it impressive is the names that's on it mm -hmm. he fought Cerrone didn't he yeah he fought Cerrone beat the shit out of Cerrone <laughs> yeah it was a good beat fight beat Cerrone he beat um, Dos Aldos he beat uh, Connor RDA yeah he beat RDA he beat Connor his resume is impressive yeah but the fact that he walked out like nah fuck this and he walked out he stole like I agree with, I don't often agree with Shaw because I think Shaw's just a really big bro yeah he gives that he's sort a, of like meathead type he, thing he's to a it. bro yeah but I'll take his opinion for what it is on this one because I think it's right. He stole that press conference and he put the attention back on him and Dustin, which was a good move because now his fight goes up. I don't think they're on a main card. I think they're headlining. No, they're, they're, yeah, they're main. I think they're headlining UFC like on Fox, aren't they? No, it's a it's the 30. Oh, they are? You, yeah, he's the one after Connor. They're on 2-3-0. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense then. Yeah, he's he's the he's the draw for he's that, the November that one. card. Yeah. What are they fighting for? They got to be the undercard then. He's or probably the gonna, he's probably gonna be the co-main. They'll probably put someone else mm. below him for like a title fight or something. The reason I don't know this is because they haven't made it official who's on that card yet. I think that one is the um, it's the lady that's fighting Valentina and no, that's two twenty eight. That's two twenty eight. Okay, it's okay. I'm just completely yeah. wrong. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Yeah, they haven't announced who's going to all be on the card yet, but that's that's their that's their big announcement for that one so far. I wonder if they're going to do that on the twenty fifth. And I think the, September. the reason Diaz is still draws is because there's a lot of him. authenticity authenticity to his character. Yeah, yeah, it's very authentic. Is what he's tr what he is. He comes across that if he doesn't want to be at the press conference, he's not going to be at the press conference. Yeah, you know, if he doesn't like somebody, he's not going to go on Twitter and bitch about. It. He's going to tell them right there. You know. Him and his brother have the same, you know, the same mentality yeah, and everything. That fuck you mentality. Yeah, and I think that's something that I personally enjoy. I've been a Diaz fan since Nick, you know, and that back when he fought uh, uh, Gogonzagi, you know, Go and he beat the hell out of him. But you know, it's one of those things that you can definitely tell, like when someone's very genuine and comes across, and that's a reason why Nick or Nate rather is still a big draw. Nick's still a draw, but he had he doesn't have a fight or anything coming up. I'm not that versed in Nick's career because Nick was out whenever I started watching, so I couldn't tell you anything about that, brother. I can tell you what I do know about mm -hmm. Nate. I think it was after maybe it was after 228 or maybe just a week after uh, Dana White was talking about Ben Askren. Did you hear anything well, about that? 228, 228 hasn't happened yet. That's September card. Or it was after the last 227. Yeah, Dana White was talking about Ben Askren. You know anything Which about that? I don't think Dana White would ever mention Ben Askren. I'm curious to know what exactly you're talking about, because these guys do not like each other. Well, I imagine someone brought it up to him. You know, I, I don't think I don't think Dana White wants to to mention Ben Askren's name without swallowing a big ass pill. You know, <laughs> um, because that was one of the saddest moments in MMA history. The fact that he's never fought in the UFC, like him and Fedor. I mean, those two definitely should have made their way there, even for one fight. Right. You know, and I think somebody asked him about him or, or something like that it was, it was, someone asked him topic came up Dana White essentially said if he's a free agent they like to meet with him and that's kind of cool because Ben you know he had a fight I think it was last year and he said that was his retirement fight but on the website it still shows him as their welterweight champ for the promotion I think he was with one championship say Ben asked say say Ben's like you know what Okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be free agent. I'll come over to the UFC. Who do you think would be the first person he fought? You can't Ooh. give him a title shot right away. Yeah, you can. You just go ahead and be he's like... He's a former champ. He is Well, he's 11-0, other... I think. 18-0. Well, and 0, that's sorry. the thing. He's undefeated. You can give him a shot because of his past and his record in other organizations. Because if you look at it, they bring talent in all the time. Especially to throw at Cyborg. What's her name? Because they fighting Cyborg. I know, but but just I'm using an example like Kunitskaya. They just threw her at Cyborg because yeah. they needed a challenger. He is an undefeated fighter. I want to see him fight Khabib. 
because well, he's a welterweight. I don't care. I want to see, see him cut down. Fight. I want to see. Yeah, he can cut down. He well, I think can. I think it would be better to see him fight welterweight because, like, see Tyrone Woodley, who's who's their welterweight champ. Tyrone. 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 Yes. What is it? Tyrone? Yeah. There's no E. Uh, let's just go with Woodley. All mm-hmm. right. Woodley. <laughs> T. Wood. Yeah, T. Wood is their uh, welterweight champ, right? Right. And why not have the welterweight champ, who was a wrestler going into it, I think he was a division whatever wrestler, fight another division uh, NCAA wrestler. <laughs> another division whatever wrestler. <laughs> and, like, that would be the greatest thing ever to see these two because, you know, Ben's really good on his feet standing up, and he has gotten a lot better. Cause uh, so I didn't know anything about Ben Askren, but I kept hearing Rogan talk about him, and you've mentioned him once or twice. So I did look up some highlights. And I, the ones I caught first were like earlier in his career, and he didn't use them a lot. He just used them to set up a takedown. Mm-hmm. Now he's gotten a lot better with them, and uh, yeah, I'm all in the Ben Askren camp. <laughs> well, like I, he, uh, you know, he's. He trains up in Chicago area with uh, like Pettis, and I think Michael Johnson was up there for a bit. I can't remember everybody in the camp, but you know he's up there with what's his Mark Henry. I think it's the the guy up there that trains with him. I don't want to get it too wrong, right? But you know they're they're getting better with the striking wise, and you know he's a phenomenal wrestler. So why not put him against uh, Woodley and see how that goes down? Because it's not going to be, you know, if you get them two together, it's not going to be a Stephen Thompson Wonder Boy fight no. between Woodley and Thompson. That's not. That's understand. not going to happen. I don't think T Wood's going to let any fight get like that again. I think T Wood because he he thinks he's God's gift to that division, which is good because you need a champ with that kind of mentality. But I think he got so much backlash and criticism for the way he fought those two fights. And right after that, the Maya fight was really boring, too. So if you think about it, you've had three back-to-back boring fights. If you don't go in there and do something with Till, then you're going to lose a lot of... I still like T-Wood because he's a character, for one. and He's willing to fight people, and he's fought a lot of hard people to fight. And then he goes in there and just drops Lawler with... Bam, one, done. Thank you, ma'am. It's over. <laughs> See, the, the funny part about the Lawler fight is, like, I thought it like this. I thought Lawler was, like... The World War II tank who just got out of like a vicious battle with Roy, right? And he was still kind of like repaired. He had like a, right. like a chain that was falling off, and like he just hit him with that one part of the armor that wasn't quite changed yet, right. you know? And he hit him and went down. Given T Wood has one hell of a right and left, you know, he's got a power transfer like a motherfucker. Yeah. And Lawler fell, which is great. I th- think T Wood's run up to the championship was amazing. If and you then watch once those he fights. gets the belt, it's less than stellar. Yeah, but because you come. Of, Dropped. Now you want to be this master tactician who dances around the ring against your opponent. I mean, like I, w- I understand if like a fighter, I mean, a fight, dude. a fighter win, changes. Win. Like when uh, GSP, you know, when he was fighting, he was like, he, you know, his nickname used to be Rush. I think they still call him Rush. Yeah, George Rush. Yeah. Like when he got up to to the belt, when he fought Matt Hughes, and Matt Hughes knocked him out, or was it Matt Sarah the first one? When he, when he lost the belt. Matt he, Sarah knocked him out. Yeah, Matt Hughes did it too. You said he lost the belt. The only thing I the first time he lost the belt, I think it might have been to Sarah. When he got knocked out, he changed everything. You know, because GSP is one of those guys that analyzes everything. everything. It's like, oh man, I stepped two inches to the right when I should have stepped two inches to the left. He's one of those guys. He changed everything and he became more of a tactician. But Woodley, he just changed everything and became more of a tactician without a cause, it seemed like. He was like, all right, well, I've got the belt. I'm going to keep the belt. Which, given, that's a great plan. You got to keep that belt. You know, for as long as possible. Yeah, I mean, if you want to be successful. Put just, it's a boring fight. Otherwise, you could be like Cody and just have it for that one fight that you got it. Well, he's not going to get that belt again. Not for a while. Mm-hmm. He will not get another title shot until he You better does. go down and wait or go up, pick something. He's not going to get it while TJ has it. I can tell you that. He ain't, nobody's going to want to see it. He wants a belt. He's got he's to pick a different division right now. But yeah, I would love to see Askren come over. Uh, he's always one of the fights GSP. I don't think GSP would do that fight right out the gate. No, I think if if he comes over, they give him a title shot. Say he wins, right? Because we don't know what would actually happen. Oh, dude! Say Askren's he wins. Got eleven wins by stoppage. Oh, that's crazy. Say he say he wins. Say they they go welterweight, right? right? Say he comes in, he dominates Woodley, right? Just destroys him. He would have to put. Then you would call up GSP, be like, "Hey, man, can you cut some weight again?" And I guarantee you, GSP was like, okay, you know, in that French accent he's got, and then, <laughs> boom, he'd show up on, on, uh, at MSG and Madison Square Garden and just go at it. That'd be great. Like, say you, that's what they need to do, all right? November, get Askren in the UFC, 
get him to fight Woodley as the under one because I know he's fighting in September. I don't think Till's going to be too big of a deal with him. Say he mows through Till. If it's within one round, you get him to fight in November against Aspirin, right? Get them two going. Whoever fights there gets GSP in March. Put him on the Brock Lesnar card so it's the under. Guess what you got? You got one massive fucking card. Yeah, you have one of the biggest cards other than the Khabib and Connor card, which the is winner be the, the highest of paid that card. one gets to put on the Brock card against Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. I don't know. I don't know how good Khabib would do against the or vice versa. Diaz would do against Khabib because Diaz is good on the ground, but I don't think he could withstand that much of a Khabib's fucking slaughter. a different story with a lot of them. But I'm just saying, like, if you put say you did Connor Diaz three on the Brock card, guess what? You're gonna sell out everything. Like, they would specifically put more seats in wherever they're... They do the, like, the Dallas Cowboys Stadium where they had the Raptor seating in between sects. I remember yeah. that a few years. The Super yeah. Bowl, when they did the Super Bowl here. Yeah, when they, well, they, they would put more seats in places. Yeah. Man, that would be interesting, though. I would I would really like to see Ben Askren come in. So here's one that I do think would be interesting. Um, RDA and... I'm not, I don't know how to say his first name. Ponzinibbio? Mm-hmm. Those two fighting. Which one? Santiago. There you go. Javier dos, dos Anjos y, and Santiago Ponzinibbio. Okay, so Ponzinibbio fight Perry. I don't think he won. He won against Perry, but I don't think he did. Just watching the fight because he lit Perry up. Perry beat him up. But the, I think he won that card because they were south of the freaking border. Again, I do not go on those fights. Him and RDA are kind of like having this little back and forth. Like, uh, they're both hesitant to fight each other. Because RDA doesn't... He wants to fight for it. Um, meaning that he wants to fight for the belt. Right? Although he just he just lost to Kobe. He does want to fight for it. Ponzinibbio is trying to get higher up in the rankings. I think he's below 9. Because last time I saw, I think he fought to get in the top 10. And uh, those two are like, eh. Uh, I, I want to fight you. And RDA is like, no, I don't want to fight right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to move forward. So... I really want to see these two guys go at it. And I really don't care who wins, to be honest, because they can do that fight below the border, and I won't care. Because either one of them can win there, and the judges won't care. Screw you, Brazil. Not the people, not the country, but those guys down there on the, on the fight game. Guys are some dirty mothers. That is uh, completely correct. I had nothing else to say about that one. That's that's a pretty accurate statement there, man. But that, I want to see that fight. With that division, though, I, I'm waiting... I got to wait for the T-Wood fight to see what happens with Till to really make any calls. Because I, I mentioned Kobe, and I don't like Kobe. I don't like him at all. I think he's just doing everything he can to be, you know, trying to get his name out there. He's trying to be Connor, but he's not Connor. He's, he's like, what do you call that soda that Walmart has? Sam's Choice? He's, he's like, the RC Cola. No, no. RC oh. Cola is better than that. Sam's Choice? Yeah, he's like the, Dr. He's Thunder? the off-brand of your favorite soda. Dr. Thunder? So, like, if Connor is your Save soda... Rate. Save value. Kobe is your cheaper version. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> is this, was it safe value? Safe yeah, I don't know. It's, well, great choice? Something it's, like that. Something. Well, I think it's a great choice. Whatever. But I can't wait to see what happens here because while Kobe's not my guy, I do want to see him fight either one of them. I want to see him fight Till because I think Till would just destroy him. I don't think, one, there's a massive size disadvantage for Kobe against Till. Because Till is already smaller than Woodley. And Till is tall or not, sorry. Till's Colby bigger. Colby is already smaller than Woodley in stature and size. Okay? He's a smaller dude. A lot smaller. Because even RDA doesn't look like he's half the man Woodley is. Just when they're standing next to each other. And Colby looks smaller than RDA when they fought. So put RDA up against Till, who's a giant. It is literally David versus Goliath there. Or Big Brother versus Little Brother. And... I want to see them two go at it because I think Till would just smash the hell out of him. But I also think Woodley would just beat the hell out of him. So I can't wait for the fight between T. Wood and Till to finish because I want to see whoever wins beat the hell out of Colby, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think most people can agree with you. Everybody wants to see <laughs> Colby pretty much get destroyed by somebody. Unless you're like a really big like MAGA fan, you know? But <laughs> other than that, I think everybody can agree with you that like, they want to see Colby just get destroyed. Like, if someone can hit him hard enough to, like, push him through the cage, have him fall on a bunch of little bits, <laughs> I think everybody would be like, oh, I could, that was the greatest fight ever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to see that, though. Um, God, I just, I, it's not like I hate Colby. I just, the way he comes off, and everybody's got, everybody's met somebody like him. He, he just seems like 2.0. 
knockoff version of the guy that everybody hates. Yeah. Right? He's the stereotypical, stereotypical like, 80s bad guy. You know, if he was in an 80s movie, he'd be the guy in Karate Kid. I don't know? even think that. Like, I think he was, he's the he, guy who just talks way too much to make himself look like... He's the guy who, who your your action movie star first beats up in the movie. <laughs> first beats up. It, yeah, I'm the saying... The guy like, who's standing there with the, all his bros and pushing you around... And then that dude beats him up, and then later on, they're best friends. Type he's of the thing. he's the uh, the Cobra Kai dojo, you know. He's that guy where you're like, there's no way you can like him. He's not a likable person. Hey, before this fight even happens, though, the two two A fight, Till's got to do one thing, which is make weight. He does. He, he does. has to make weight. Jesus, well, he was only off by what a, like less than a pound on his last one. But it's two times but, in a row, isn't it? Yeah, but the last time he had uh, issues with his baby mama. Look, I can only give you... So, you're a fighter, like he, he had uh, issues... Like, she was in the hospital because she was about to have the baby. And he, he she had, like, complications. So he had to stop doing what he was doing. Because he was in the middle of the weight cut when they were like, Yeah, you gotta go to the hospital like because your, your girl's there. So he had to stop do cutting weight, I think, the day of. So he, he had to stop his whole process to go do that. And then he came back and he made the weight. Well, he missed it by, like, two pounds. One or two pounds. He I can't still remember. missed it. He still missed it, but they still had the fight. I think it was the weight the next day. They had to be within certain something. But there was a reason for the last one. Everyone forgets to say there was a reason. I get life happens, but you got to do it. Yeah, you got to make weight. It wasn't like there was a belt on the line or nothing for the last one or the one before that. I, there was really no excuse for the first time with it. The second one, you could be like, yeah, uh, I had an actual reason. If surprise, he still made the show and everything. They still let it happen. But again, it is... England and they let stuff slide if you're English. They Ask Dan Anderson. Of, yeah, they let a lot of stuff fly. Hendo, Hendo won, won that, that fight. fight. <laughs> I think that's unanimous in this this podcast. We got to make a shirt. Every man. podcast. Hindo won that fight shirt. We'll get... I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a shirt. It's gonna have Bisping on one side, just their name. It's gonna have Hindo on the other side. It's gonna be Bisping zero, Hindo two. That's it. It's not gonna be one and one. It's gonna be zero oh and two. That's it. Fair enough. And then underneath it, I'm gonna have the logo. The, the, from the, Hindo's We had to contact Henderson before we do any of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll drop my shelf. That way it's not copyright. If well, you do it your own image, it's different. We'll just flip it and then like change the angle of the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Bend it down just yeah. a little. What if I just took a picture of Bisping like laid out? Because Hindo's is the flying one, right? Well, yeah, his is him coming down towards him. So right. if we just do... What if we just have the picture of... If we do the full thing. No, what if you just have the picture of Bisping, like the outline of him, of him knocked out, and then you have... The, uh, the the score, you have the 0 and 2, and you have Henderson <laughs> over here. Put both pictures of him knocked, one picture of him knocked out, and the other picture with his, with his eye all jacked up. <laughs> he got one from both fights. Uh, that, oh, that, that would be interesting. I, w- I would buy that shirt. <laughs> I, I want to make it now. We got to. All right, we'll, so, we'll, we'll come up with some stuff. So here's one of the fights that I do want to I do want to talk about. Because this is the one that I'm interested in. is not because I like you, Will Romero. I want to see him fight Paul Costa. We've talked about this a few times. But I think now it's confirmed. And is it confirmed now? At UFC 230. It's going to be interesting. Yes. Um, yes. These are two big hulking dudes that are going to hopefully go in there and just destroy each other. I think I think Paul Costa, Costa is going to underestimate how hard I think Noel hits. Costa is going to go in there with so much confidence because he won his last couple fights. And he thinks, because he's younger, he's a little more built, I think he's going to throw that to the wind and go in there. And Yolo Romero is going to show him what a uh, like a 50-year-old dude who's built like a brick shit house can do. I think Yolo Romero's going to toss him around like a rag doll. I think he should. I think he should take his hands out of the equation. I yeah. think Yolo Romero should. So like in his last fight with Whitaker, he would let them hands fly. He was reserved with them, but when he let them fly, they came fast. And they came from the they came from the bleachers, man. Yeah. Those things were swinging for, you know, home runs every time. And you he, could see a little air blast hitting people's hair in the he, audience. He was winging them so. I mean, what's his name? Uh, Whit, White, uh, Whitaker. 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 He felt him. He felt him three times. One time he was almost put down. The other time he was on, you know, <laughs> Wobble Street. He was on baby legs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was all over the place. Yeah. You. Uh, Definitely, I would like to see that fight. If it, if it is confirmed, that'd be something to watch, especially if it's two thirty. That's uh, that's and the I'll, card I, you're talking about. You know, I, just the this is the asshole in me coming out. I just want to see the model get his ass kicked. 
You just want to see the model? Get yeah, I mean, he's a model. And I want to see his career modeling be put aside for well, a little you, while. You were really excited to see Luke Rockhold get knocked out when Bisming fought him. So that was, like, I, got a, yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah, I mean, You're, plus I don't like Rockhold. <laughs> and I don't like Bisping. And I think it was hilarious you, you, that you should, Bisping, pillow fist, knocked out Rockhold. We so. should start, if, say YOLO. YOLO? YOLO. Yeah, say YOLO. YOLO Romero. Say Romero goes in there and he destroys Costa, right? Let's put him against Alan Joban and just have the whole model <laughs> thing go through, and we just call him the model smasher. There you, know? you go. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Huh. He could have a new tag. But honestly, if we're going to talk about you, well, I want to see him go up because I think his weight cut's getting to him. If yeah. he wants to continue fighting, God, man, he's getting old. He's 40-plus. Well, he said he was going to go up to light heavyweight. He needs to. Say he does. The say he goes, does smashes this dude. Can you imagine him fighting D.C.? That'd Both be, Olympic that would be wrestlers, interesting. but I don't. That's not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. That'd be interesting, though. I want. I don't care if they do it in a training room, and they're just would, video footage. I would just it. love to see you grapple like that. Say they, they're like, hey, let's just go for a grappling session. I just see like fuck cutting weight. Like say they just go to the same gym, yeah, you, and hey. do it. I would love to see that. I love watching grappling. I watched Abu Dhabi, you know, Eddie Bravo and Tate, all all that shit. You, I would love to see them. You'd wrestle. have to imagine what that would bring to the team too. That's America's top team, right? DC, AKA, yeah. I think so. Okay. No, that's AKA. It's an American top team. Which I mean, I get all these acronyms. American top team is different. It's a okay. different one. Yeah, I get all the, I get all the acronyms. This guy's they got to really shorten these. AKA things, is man. different. It's like American Kickboxing Alliance, whatever. Something but he's on like AKA. That. Yeah, he's yeah. the same thing with Khabib. Yeah, I would like to see Yoel go in there, being a, being an Olympic wrestler and a medalist, to go in there and show those guys what he knows too. Because everybody over there is wrestling heavy, yeah. really wrestling heavy. You got Khabib, you got DC. You got uh, Kane, you got well, like, Rockhold. Rockhold well, is trying to let his fist fly out now. I don't know why, but yeah, I don't know what the hell Rockhold is up to. That's a whole <laughs> different thing. Like he needs to, he needs to calm down first of all. Yeah, <laughs> work some strategy, man. And you need to work on your like shit talking game too, Rockhold. Like you have well, like, man. The if horse you believe shit. it and you achieve it, then you could do it. You know that's what Rockhold said. And that's what Bisman proved him wrong. Yeah, but I think Rockhold <laughs> was just reading some like motivational he was, poster. He yeah, had. He, he was, had one of those cats hanging from the the wire. Like, he was talk- motivational posters hanging in there. Yeah, like you, if you notice, he had a little pocketbook that had a bunch of uh, Tony Robbins quotes in it. <laughs> he was just spouting off during the press conference. But um, yeah, I would I want to see Romero move up because as long as Whitaker's there and that division's really got got some talent in it, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. No, I think after I think. He does this fight, be his last middleweight one, then move up, you know. Uh, move him up. Hell, give him, uh, you know, if he's going up to light heavyweight, give him Gustafson. You know, he's Gustafson, you know, he keeps Ooh. getting hurt and then not being hurt, you know, when, when it's time for him Is to he fight. he not hurt now? Well, he said he was hurt. Well, I know he's... I he know pulled he out. But before, hurt. for the longest time, he was like, I want to fight, I'm not hurt, I am want to do this and that, and then... You never accept a fight, and they gave him a fight, and then boop, he's out. Give him Gustafson. That'd be an interesting one. That would be interesting. I want to see that fight too. I want to see Gustafson get back in the ring. I'm just, I want to see him get back in the ring. Yo, it's somebody was saying like Jones could come back and fight Gustafson. That would be interesting. That, that would, would be that fight. would be the rematch. That would, be, I think that would be the fight for a good like. Say Jones gets back, and they need to like. I always think you should do a warm up fight, you know, because even the first time Jones came back after the whole like hit and run shit and all that. He looked really rusty in the cage. On his worst day, he got a he got a win, right? So against OSP. Yeah, it was OSP. And you know his his worst performance in the octagon, he yeah. broke a dude's arm with a kick, and he was really yeah, I was rusty. About to say, well, how good so, was OSP? Because he had his arm broken like the third so kick. So why not let you know Jones get another little like brush off the rust type thing before he goes and gets a title, you know, or can't get a title. You know, we can get in that whole debate about Jones, which, uh, by the way, I know the dude on Twitter posting that shit. I got you. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. I want to see this Chris Weidman and Luke Rockhold fight, too. Yeah, that'd be a good middleweight fight. That'd, I think those guys need or, to fight. Yeah, that'd be a middleweight fight. Or let's see, they're going up. Are they going up? Because no, Rockhold staying. wanted to go up. They're Weidman staying. Because still middleweight? Yep. I think one of the good middleweight fights that we need to talk about, because I think it'd be a good thing to do, is Dan Kelly. He wants to have his retirement fight. Right, right. And the thing about it is he wants one last fight because his kid's got a kidney disease. I can't remember which one. And essentially he doesn't have too long uh, to go, and he wants to give his kid a last little walk down the octagon. So 
he wants to he wants to do it. Zach Cummins called him out. Said I want to fight at two thirty or whatever is in December. And I mean they both agreed to it verbally. They're like, hey, let's do this. So why not do this? This would be a great cause. This would give him the last little like hurrah. I, I think the UFC should definitely be like, hey. Dan Kelly, you're in, if anything, just for that. It's his retirement, or he wants to make it his retirement fight. Let him retire. Right. You know? I think it's a good move for them. I think that's something they really need to do. Oh, uh, yeah. 100%. If, if if for nothing else, like, you got fighters on your undercards and your, your main cards that you're trying to promote, let this be an awareness cause. You could have, you know, you can have him walk down there with the kid, but... Also, if you would like to donate to a foundation that does research for this kind of thing, yeah. boom, throw the logo on there while during the walk, promote the hell out of it. You still, yes, you're a fighting company, and your goal is to go out there and watch two people knock the hell out of each other or submit each other, but at the same time, you're promoting something that needs to be promoted. Well, the UFC does a lot of a lot of different things for the fans and a lot of different charities. So most of the charities are like, well, we don't want to be associated with the fighting thing, but they do do a lot of different things, so why not make this one... A little more public go hey we know you're researching this disease we don't want this disease and any any disease should be eliminated you know if you can so why not find one there's got there's going to be one company out there who's like hell yeah we'll we'll take the donations and go for it you know make this fight happen tell dan hey you're gonna lock your kid down here's the date get ready for it and while you're doing that on ufc embedded shoot a couple videos Make him one of the stars of the embedded video. Have it known. Throw the banner at the bottom during the walk, during the fight. Throw it there. Here's the number to call for your donations. I guarantee you'll have some money. I think it'd be a good opportunity for them. I think it'd be stupid for them to miss it. And there's there's a lot of times that the UFC gets a lot of bad rep from the fighters themselves. This is a good way for them to gain back some foothold with the fighters who think the UFC screws them over sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that'd be a good move on a lot of fronts for them. Definitely. I think... I think if you're 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 with it, just to add a little extra support. If you're on Twitter, you know, hit up Dan Kelly. I think it's at Dan Kelly Doja or Judo. I think it's what his his Twitter thing is. Dan Kelly Judo. Hit him up. Tell him you agree with him. Tell him everything. Hit up UFC. Let him know because that's one thing that for sure it's got to happen. Everybody in the MMA world who hears the story will be behind it. So we talked about Connor. And Khabib, we've talked about it a few times. We talked about it before it was even an actual fight. There's one thing I think in that division that gets looked over, and I'm, I am very happy to say El Kakui is cleared. Yes. His knee is healed. Tony Ferguson is back. Let's hope he gets a fight. And I, I'm glad he's back because I think I think out of everybody with a ground game, he has the biggest chance to beat Khabib from his back. And there's not many people who are going to be able to do it. Because of that pressure, I'm glad Tony's back. I don't ever think they're going to get that fight. I think that was like the fourth, fifth time that that fight fell every, through, and it's never going to happen. Every time they set him up against Khabib, I'm there's telling you, something wrong. It's the gods of MMA. <laughs> it is whatever gods of gladiatorial combat there is. You cannot have a super <laughs> show. No <laughs> you super cannot show. Fight. What if this fight is going to be so amazing that we just can't, we can't let it happen? What if it's going to draw so many people? To MMA, all other sports just are obsolete. Then, like, what if this is the fight? Like after this fight, like <laughs> football stadiums are empty. Everybody's like, just going to MSG from now like, on, or the Vegas. That there's like no one watching the Lakers anymore. They're like, we're stuck to the TV for UFC. Oh my God, these guys went out there and destroyed each this other. This will be like the second coming of Forrest Griffin. Yeah. And Khabib Stephen walks out of there with Tony Ferguson's face on him, and Tony walks out with Khabib's face. They beat each other. To look like each other. What if that was the case? I mean, like, what if this is going to be that crazy? <laughs> it's, it, it would just be, like, if that's the one thing everybody wants. That's the fight that everybody's like, we want to see that. The only other fight people are, are like, ravenous about would be if, like, Tony, Khabib, and Connor fought in the same octagon at the same time. They're like, triple death match right now. That's the only time anybody would be like, this is a way better fight. But, you know, I'm happy to hear Tony's back. Stop kicking pipes. I can, uh, that's one thing I was very upset to see him do that. You ever watch that video? God, it was so, it was so cringy. Cause I'm like, watching him like, your knee. Well, God, like, please quit. The your worst, knee. the worst part about it, see that, cause it, it was before, the one, the video I saw was before the yeah, fight before the incident, yeah. And I, the, the only thing I can imagine is when he kicked that pipe, one day he's gonna kick it and he's gonna silver himself. Oh, God. And that thing is going to snap in half. 
Oh, God. <laughs> that's one thing I was like, ooh, you don't do that. You don't need to do that. It's just, ugh, that's one thing I, I, you know, I'm by no means am I a martial artist, but that's one of the things where I'm like, don't kick Please a don't. fucking pipe. Please don't do that. <laughs> it, like, even if I watch those Thai guys kick bamboo trees, they still give to a bamboo or tree. Or the ones that do it to the banana trees on yeah. the beach. Oh my like, God. there's still a little give to it because it's wood, it absorbs, but with a metal pipe, there's nothing absorbing there, man. Yeah. You don't need to Crazy. do it. So, there's one other thing I want to talk about in Division, and it's it's more like prep work, okay? So, Kevin and Lee, who hasn't fought in quite a while, I mean, beginning of the year, um, he doesn't have an opponent, but he went ahead and started camp, and this is what's funny, because he figures either Connor or Khabib is going to pull out of that fight <laughs> because of the history. Yeah. And he wants to be ready to step in, which it's, is a it's, it's great. It's a smart move. It's a smart move for the Motown phenom, but yeah. I still think it's it's hilarious that he did it. He's like, you know what? I want to fight one of these guys. I don't care. I don't care who I fight. I'm it's, just going to get ready for that, that weight class. Like, it's okay. a smart move. I think if he wants to add to it, definitely be on you know, social media, hidden Twitter, hidden whatever you want to call, and just be like, hey, you know, keep on it. Every time there's a press conference, go, yeah, I'll fight them. I'll fight them both. Fuck them. You know, keep on it the whole time, and if one of them falls out, guess who Dana's gonna call? I mean, I would hope he not would call. him, John Jones. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna catch weight. <laughs> They're gonna call Brock Lesnar <laughs> to do it. They're gonna call someone else. But there's a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> that would be interesting. They'll call Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> You'll put Whitaker in there. I think Whitaker would beat him, beat the hell out of him. Oh, yeah, he's a weight class above him. <laughs> yeah, he's just got so much extra weight in there. <laughs> call, call Romero, see what's up. Uh, you know, can you cut down? About we'll cut the, off a leg. About the only other thing I really saw was that um, Scott Coker over at Bellator mm-hmm. is very open to speaking to Eddie Alvarez once his his uh, tenure with the UFC is up. Because I think his contract well, is a, he's a free agent as of right now. As of right now? As of right now, he's a free agent. And Coker, if I remember reading it right, he was like, I'm totally open up to it. And Dana said it was no problem. I think it's what he was saying. Well, too. from what I saw in that little interview, is Dana was like he wants to keep him if he wants to say, but he's not going to keep Eddie if Eddie doesn't want to. Yeah. If he wants to pursue the opportunity, I think he said he's open to it. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's publicity wise, it's a good move for Dana to say, hey, whatever he wants to do, I'm down with. Mm-hmm. Again, like a lot of he gets a lot of bad press for. From the fighters, because, oh, Dana's not doing this, Dana's not doing that. I was like, all right, man. Like, he looks like he's doing a good call for the, the fighters that have shown up repeatedly if, if time there, after time. If you're there to make Dana money, I think he's happy with you, you know? But if you can't really make Dana that much Connor. money, yeah, like, he, he feeds Connor. You know, it's one of those things, if, if you can't make Dana that much money, I don't think he really pays too much attention to you, you know? Like, he's not, he doesn't call, you know, buddy, like, he's not buddy a buddy with people on the undercard that much. So yeah. one thing that like always bothers me is whenever I sit there and watch the UFC events and they pan, you know, they're watching the fighters and you can see Dana in the background. He's always got his head down. He's not really watching the fight. I mean, you know, he's looking at his phone, trying, you know, he's a businessman. He's got all kinds of yeah. shit. I'm like, but man, you think you couldn't take two hours out of your day to watch your main event? Yeah. <laughs> like, you you know. should be able to schedule that or turn your phone off some, but you know, business is business, right? Yeah, it's one of those weird things. Like, you know, if I've read interviews with him or I've seen interviews and I've, I've hear people talk about him and like you know dan is a businessman all the time and like chell was talking about being a businessman or you know dana being a businessman calling him at like three o'clock in the morning and he he was like you know it's three o'clock in the morning he's like oh man i thought it was one so he's always on his little grind there i think that would be interesting though like if say eddie leaves he goes over to bellator again that's kind of like his homecoming and maybe we'll see Chandler four, you know, because I think they fought three times. But I, honestly, I think Michael Chandler needs to go over to the UFC. Yes. By now. I mean, he's he's proven he's a high caliber fighter over there. Honestly, I think Rory needs to go back to UFC too. Yeah. Uh, well, I think he needs to fight uh, Musasi first. Oh, yeah. Get that fight out. Because we all kind of want to see what's happening there. That'll be a Bellator event that I do watch. For uh, a change. You know, he's also in the welterweight tournament coming yes. up. Which is interesting. I don't like that. I think he he fought his ass off against Douglas Lima. Well, 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 Bellator does it weird because Matt Mitrione had a, a title shot. Like essentially, he was the heavyweight title. You know, he had it there. Uh, he fought Fedor and then a couple other people, and he he was. I think he had the most wins in there. Uh, but they didn't have a heavyweight at the time, or they did, but he wasn't fighting. You know, I think they they let him go. They he went into the heavyweight tournament, which was weird. Which I kind of agree with, but I kind of don't. You know, Mitrione took a lot of, like a roll of the dice. 
because there's no chance, no, no knowing going into it whether you're going to win. Yeah, I mean, it's and he had a number one spot. That's a big roll of the dice. Yeah, Roy's about to do the same thing. Other than that, man, I got nothing. I couldn't find anything else. You're about Cerrone. Uh huh. Cerrone's got a fight league he's putting together. Oh goodness. Yeah, it's called the CFS. I think it's the Cowboy Fighting Series. A bunch of guys in ropers out there. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And uh, he's basically got like an open casting call on his uh, his Twitter and his website. It's like uh, you know, you go to their their Twitter, it sends you a link to their website, cowboyfightseries.com. It's literally I went to it and it's like your name, your number, where you where you're out of. Send me a link to a couple of videos, and they're trying to put together a, a show. All right, I'm in. <laughs> I would watch it. I mean, it's cowboy. Well, it's, why not? Right? I think. You Cerrone's know, car- actual fighting career, I think, is coming to an end soon. He's oh yeah, good lord, he's been fighting a long time. I think you get a chance to give back to the MMA community; they're going to give back to you in any way. And I think this is one of the things where, like, well, he's coming close to the end, so why not put something out? You know, we like to promote any kind of local MMA. You know, if you're a local fighter and you have a fight coming up, definitely hit us up. We'll see what we can do. Definitely, if you got any type of any way to give back to a community like that you're like hey we're putting on a show we need some people i'm gonna tell you about it if i figure if i find a local show it's like hey we need some fighters i'll put it on here because that's one thing that i definitely like i want to see the sport grow even more than it already is i want to see some good fights and one of the ways you can see good fights is that extreme knockout (laughs) (laughs) i gotta do the plug it's uh september 29th in the dfw area at uh gas monkey live tickets go on sale august 17th this Uh, weekend this is their second annual all women undercard. It's all women on the undercard, and then they have their actual professional fights. I think it's like five of them. Pull up the card here, but I don't know where it's at. I know they have the the women's title up for grabs, and I think they have uh, another title up there. I don't have it pulled up, but it's going to be great. If you can't make it, check it out at uh, XKO TV. They have all the highlights of past events on there. And they even have, uh, you know, I think they're going to live stream their their next one. It's just September 29th. Uh, definitely, I'll check it out if you guys get a chance. We're going to be there. Yeah. We're going to watch we're, it. We're going to be there uh, for sure. Not missing that one. <laughs> I did check it out. They have a really interesting cage. You know how, like, most, uh, like, Bellator's got the circle. UFC's got the octagon. They have a square with a cage. Production <laughs> costs got to be small. Uh, yeah, you know, and it's, it's kind of a small cage, too, from, what I, from the... The angle, which is great, because you know it's like, hey, we're we're getting close. And uh, the interesting part, I, I did look it up. They do a lot of Muay Thai fights too. Oh, really? It's not just uh, MMA. If if you guys want to check out any, you know, Muay Thai in the DFW area, I definitely check it out. I saw a couple highlights on their uh, website. There's a couple good knockouts in there. I I definitely check it out. I think uh, next time we'll we'll do a little bit more of the XKO stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll, for sure. Look into some of the fighters. I know they have had a um, guy we were talking about last time. Kevin Holland came out of there. Kevin Holland came out of there. Um, I believe James Vick had a fight yeah, in there. Yeah, James Vick did. Uh, Ryan Benoit, he's a UFC fighter that came out of there. There's, there's a couple more that went to uh, Bellator, too. There's a, quite a few that came out of there that were really good. They were professional talent. So you never know. You know, you might see go to a show or watch it. And you might see the next John Jones. Can you imagine? You imagine having the chance to see like Anderson Silva before his ticket price was like three hundred dollars to see him. That'd be crazy too, because we can talk about man. I knew this guy before he was famous. It's kind of like when you listen to a band and you're oh, like, yeah. oh man, I was I was into it before they were really big. All right, guys. I think that's about that's about it for today's episode. Thanks yeah. for listening. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to the Hook J Podcast. Podcast. Hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next episode. Sometimes you've got to do what's right for you and not do what's right for everybody else.